Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel, right, so now we're gonna talk about Grandmaster's Gauntlet, now I did stream it pretty much straight away as it started, I started about 15 minutes late, uh, because I gave myself about 10 minutes to pick my team, and the team on the screen is uh, what I ended up using, and for the most part it worked out quite well. Now, this is not going to be a full guide. This is going to be more or less description of my strategy and my thoughts about piece of content in general. So that is exactly where we are going to start. I personally did enjoy this. It is definitely nowhere near as long or hard as Abyss. Uh, the health pools are fairly manageable, even for five star champions and that uh, whole threatening language of six star rank threes. Uh, obviously, six star rank threes are better here, but five stars are still perfectly viable without any doubt and uh, i like the fights a lot of the fights are tricky you did need quite specific counters uh, and uh, because so many of the fights are tricky quake is inevitably one of the mvps uh, for this content now towards the end of the quest actually my hand was really really tired and i physically couldn't keep on quaking uh, so if you do plan on relying on Quake, you're going to have to take some breaks because those fights are still relatively long with like seven to 900k health pulls. Overall, uh, let's just go over each of the fights and what champions did uh, which fights. So first lane was pretty much entirely with Quake. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention that I ended up using 12 revives, four of whom were team revives, but I kind of brought in champions that were less than ideal on purpose just to like chip something down with Corvus towards the end or something like that at times. And uh, you can definitely do it cheaper and better uh, because once again, I gave myself about 10 minutes to kind of like quickly throw together a team. I'm sure that uh, Aegon could have been a very worthwhile addition, maybe in some of these spots or some other champions like Magneto, Doom or Ghost and so on and so forth. It's just this is the team that I ended up bringing and uh, the explanations of each champion are going to come as follows. So for the first lane, it's pretty much entirely Quake. Now I did Quake Dr. Doom, that was a solo. I did mess up on Terax at the end, but you can solo Terax with Quake as well. Alternatively, for each of these fights, I Hulk can demolish that Doctor Doom, by the way, and uh, Namor can destroy that Terex. I'm sure there will be more options, therefore I'm not gonna go over all of the possible options. I will upload guide for this piece of content, but that's going to be tomorrow. This is going to be, once again, what I used and how did it go for me. So Doctor Doom and Terex were Quake. Vision can be Quake as well, relatively easy, no problem there at all whatsoever. And uh, I... I think I did mess up, no I did not mess up, and then I quit out on purpose to finish off the fight with Corvus in order to give him the first two charges, so that gave my Corvus two charges, then I went up against Modok, which is another Quake fight, and nothing too tricky there, and uh, once again I ended up finishing the fight up with Corvus just to get that auto block charge, now, Spider Ham is arguably one of the harder fights here. I personally, once again, used Quake, and he is quite hard to Quake champion. Other than that, you probably will want to end up using, I don't know, Ghost or uh, Venom or somebody, but that depends on how you build your team. I Quaked the Spider Ham. I did mess up a couple of times, uh, but it wasn't too bad overall. And uh, then we have Wolverine Weapon X, and this was a very, very quick fight for my Archangel. Archangel absolutely destroyed it. But once again, I quit out of the fight when Archangel, uh, sorry, yeah, when Wolverine Weapon X was at like 2 or 3%, something like that, just to get that mission on Corvus. Now, I did uh, solo the thing with Shang-Chi. I don't necessarily think that Shang-Chi is the best answer for this thing boss, but it worked out for me. It was fairly lengthy fight, but it was a solo nonetheless. Korg, that was a Quake fight, nothing too special there. Takes a while. Dragon Man, I <laughs> also ended up quaking. And the way you Quake Dragon Man is quite simple. You get him to use a special attack, and you get that special attack 1, if it is special attack 1, to actually touch your block in order to get that uh, debuff placed on you and for him to consume his charge, or you let him use special 2. And after that time, if you happen to have concussion on Dragon Man, when he would regain his power gain buff back, well, Quake prevents that, and then the rest of the fight is just a random vanilla opponent that you can Quake. So I did Quake the Dragon Man uh, against uh, Black Panther. Uh, 
I did bring in Archangel, but I didn't mess up the stat because I forgot that he's going to start unblockable because of Arc Overload and Armor Assault. And then I brought in Corvus and that was like a two shot. It's worth mentioning that I was running moderate boost. I wasn't like fully boosted throughout the run, but I, what, I did have Suicide Masteries. And for the purposes of Corvus, I did use Cosmic Power Boost as well. But yeah, this was, I think, two shot with Corvus Glaive. Moving on to the next fight, uh, Nightcrawler. He was a bit tricky. And in all seriousness, I should have quaked him. There's absolutely no reason not to. But uh, I ended up using Corvus, I believe. Yeah, it was Corvus for most part that I used, and it was again like two shot or something. And the reason I didn't quake him was because my hand was already destroyed. I should have taken a break. Spider Gwen is quite tricky because she has window of opportunity stun, one eyed open, and the best defense and force of will. So it is a definite uh, hard way to find perfect counters for her. However, I just brought in my Corvus with four charges and kept smashing her block. I did make a mistake when she was down to about 20%. You can definitely one-shot this fight with Corvus, uh, but I ended up accidentally parrying her with the window of opportunity stun, so the stun got reflected, and I got uh, my face kicked in by her. Then I just revived the Corvus and finished her off with Corvus. And speaking of Corvus, uh, that is exactly who I use for this domino as well. She has a limber, force of will, debilitate, matador, and power shield. So I was fairly conscious about the use of my glaive charges and I tapped her block quite a bit because uh, Matador lets me gain power relatively easier or better and then two or three level twos were pretty much enough to get the job done and uh, this mojo was the first fight where I Hulk kind of came clutch. I just went in with I Hulk and I just laid in the mojo and I think I got him about to 20% or something like that. Uh, before I run out of my damage. So you probably can one-shot, but uh, either way, I Hulk nuke tactic was employed here. That was the reason why Immortal Hulk was on my team to begin with. Any fight where I would struggle too much, the plan was just to nuke into them with I Hulk, uh, because his damage capability, I think, still is extremely underrated in the community. From the point where you drop that level 2, you have a very long stun where you can do a ton of damage to the opponent, then you can go into level 1, and yes, you can get unlucky and that stun might not trigger, but if it does trigger, you can carry on to your next level 1 and then perhaps even to your third level 1, and if you are in, uh, unblockable at any point there, then you can kind of like just go and cheese further. And uh, he worked fantastic for a ton of fights. Now, Immortal Abomination, I did initially bring in Archangel twice, and the uh, first time I just made a mistake. I had the great RNG, he was starting to go down very quickly, and I just got tagged, and uh, I started, well, dropping down my health very, very quickly. And second fight, I just had a very bad RNG, and that's why I didn't want to do it anymore. And uh, for the rest of the fight, I just brought in Immortal Hulk, who took him down to a, from about 70% to 0%. It wasn't the quickest fight because of his increased physical resistance and him having physical resistance uh, based on the number of poisons uh, he has active in general. But thanks to iHulk's uh, immunity to uh, healing modification abilities, uh, Abomination's Petrifier was actually consistently healing me up. The Disorian debuff you get from Under Pressure was healing me up. And uh, yeah, I ended up finishing this Immortal Abomination from 70% to 10%. Now, Immortal Abomination, once again, was uh, I Hulk cheese for over 50% of his health. And then I brought in, like, Corvus to finish off the fight once I messed him up. And again, that is why I Hulk came clutch. Because in those 10 minutes, as I was planning my team, I couldn't find, like, perfect counters for everything. And I just figured out for several of these fights, like Mojo, like uh, Abomination, so and so forth, I'm just going to bring in I Hulk and I'm going to nuke in the opponents. I might use a Revive or two, but it worked out perfectly. So I Hulk and Corvus got take took care of that abomination. Then we have Sasquatch, which I quaked down to like 3% health. I did mess up in the end and there is a chance you can finish the fight with Quake as well. But uh, I did mess up when he was at 3% health. Then I just brought in Archangel to finish off the fight uh, because Neurotoxin shut down the life cycle and can still deal damage through through that. Now we have Polka Dot Power and uh, sharpened claws and cutting wires and all that other good stuff. I did try Archangel, and I think I would have been able to one-shot the guy had I healed up my Archangel. Unfortunately, I didn't, therefore I kind of ran out of health in the fight. 
And then for the last 60 or 50%, I did end up using Corvus and just, uh, yeah, waiting for my second set of charges. I did gain no power uh, because of Polkadot power and I couldn't spam my special attacks, but at four charges, a moderate boost, Corvus was doing plenty of damage to get the remainder of the fight down in like two sets of charges. Just perfect. Then we have this Void, which is also one of the scarier fights. We have long distance relationship, power shield, shifting immunity to bleed and poison. And my answer to this fight was uh, very simple. It was Shang-Chi. I did use Shang-Chi somewhere before that as well, by the way. Uh, don't really remember where, but I think I did something with Shang-Chi. Oh yeah, that was the thing and something else. But yeah, Shang-Chi did solo this Void relatively easily. Then Nick Fury, and uh, this was... Uh, what was it, Nick Fury? Uh, I believe I brought in Shang-Chi with half health, again, because I knew that I'm gonna use Team Revive after I uh, drop dead. So <clears throat> I used Shang-Chi destroyed first, life of Nick uh, Fury. I did die whilst he was in his second life. And then I brought in Corvus to finish off the fight. Uh, that was uh, fairly straightforward. And this Thanos is actually the easier version of Thanos without the reverse controls. And it, he went down quite smooth. Now, uh, I had kind of read his abilities, but I still didn't fully remember that fight. And uh, I went in with Corvus. I did about 30% damage or something like that uh, before I messed up. And uh, then I brought in iHulk, and iHulk brought him down to like last 20% or something like that. iHulk was very, very clutch for this fight, by the way. Uh, once again, and then I finished the fight with Shang-Chi. And that was all she wrote. So that was my strategy champions that I used. Once again, I do not necessarily claim that this is the best team or the best strategy. I kind of like quickly threw together a team that I thought would work. And it worked out quite well for me. As I said, 12 team revives, obviously some health potions that I did not count. Uh, sorry, 12 revives in total, four of whom were team revives and then some health potions that I had in my stash. I did not end up spending any units at all whatsoever. And I did not end up uh, changing my masteries or anything like that. Now, if I would not have Liquid Courage and Double Edge active on my account, I probably definitely would have brought in a bit different team with different setup. Corvus would not be in there and a few other champions would not. But uh, overall, I'm fairly happy with the team that I brought, uh, if not extremely happy, actually. I'm not entirely sure which champions I would replace for what. I'm very, very uh, satisfied with the performance of all of them. And uh, that is going to be it for today. I'm a bit tired. I'll probably just going to take the rest of the evening off because it is getting quite late. However, tomorrow you guys can definitely expect uh, some sort of guides and stuff like that. Uh, as the final close, uh, closing kind of like thought, uh, it is a great shame that this content is not permanent. Uh, however, it is meant to be coming back. In which case, if you are at a progression level where you do have uh, ability to clear this content, definitely do. Do not listen to what Kabam says. This content is way more worth investing your resources than uh, pretty much anything in the game to be honest because the rewards are absolutely bonkers the rewards are way better than 7.2 and uh, it will hardly cost you more resources if you are relatively skilled or have a decent roster or even if you end up spending three five ten thousand units on this do it definitely do it uh it's way more worth spending units on this piece of content for two three hours uh in questing than going through abyss 100 percent uh or doing act six or something like that so i do recommend everybody who is remotely close to the ability and progression level of being able to do this to actually go for it and do this that being said that is it for now let me know if you have any more questions i will check out all of the comments tomorrow morning as i said guides full-on will be coming then and uh yeah that is about it and i'm gonna catch you guys soon see ya Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have